Perfect. Are we already recording? We are ready to go. Perfect. So, welcome everyone. This is uh, a weekly meeting for diversity and inclusion meeting group. Uh, you should have all the link to the uh, notes. We have an agenda prepared for today that uh, we were already discussing. And the first one, well, I'll go through the items we have here, which are uh, the Open Source Leadership Summit panel change, uh, which is taken now at the beginning of March, well, mid-March mainly. Then we have review last week's action items, review some specific uh, objectives that we have defined, uh, and then look for other uh, for the next week, meeting facilitator and, and note taker. Then we have some others as outreach intern follow up that probably Matt will help with this. Um, uh, what is this BU plus Red Hat open source inclusion update? I'm not aware of this. Did someone uh, yes. add this? Uh, yeah, I, I, I added that. Um, so um, we're working on a project around the like, collecting metrics for inclusion and diversity. And um, yeah, sorry, yeah. Yeah, right. Thank you very much for the reminder. Uh, well, so this is the agenda for today. Uh, so let's start with the first thing, which is the Open Source Leadership Summit panel change. So who's yeah, going to change? That's just me. So basically, Georg is going gonna, is gonna to go. So it's mostly just swapping Georg out for myself on the DNI panel. I was, I was going to get to, to consider the same, but uh, as you are doing this, okay. <laughs> He just has a much better representation in the DNI group. I'd love to have him there. Yeah, and, and I, I do have another talk, so um, I was happy to to give my seat to Georg. But uh, no, I'm giving my seat to Georg. But I can give mine. <laughs> Everyone wants to have Georg. <laughs> well, I think what, what, that both of you see me as a worthy replacement. <laughs> no. But please let's not fight over this. Yeah, perfect. Okay. Um, Wait, I don't think we're decided on. So who's going to be oh. in the panel then? So we do have uh, Dan Foster and Sarah, and it was you, but perhaps now Georg, and me, and I don't remember if we had anyone else. It's perhaps it's Emma. Sarah, it's I Dawn. Is Nicole involved too? She is. Nicole, of course. Yeah, you're right. Sorry, I forgot Nicole. Yeah, so right now, actually, it's, it would be Sarah, Dawn, Georg, and Nicole. And, oh, there's an and. So maybe you're on there, Daniel, and it just got cut off. Oh, you are. Uh, yeah, you're yeah, on. I'm, yeah. But, yeah. Okay. I, I think they typically like to have, like, four plus the moderator, um, potentially five plus moderator, but that gets a little unwieldy. Okay. Yeah. Four plus moderator sounds like a good approach. Right. Mm. Well, Daniel, if you're, if you're still able to take it, your spot, that'd be great. But if not, I can serve as a moderator. Yep, yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm definitely happy to participate. Um, as we are having some other people involved from Hyperlayer and some other communities, mm -hmm. might be another well, opportunity to have them on board in somehow. Yeah, that's a good idea. Mm. So, um, Happy to discuss about this and okay. have the other talk. So happy, happy to, to have this and bring other people. Okay. And maybe a good approach would be, um, I think Nicole and I sort of, with Nicole actually taking the lead, helped yep. put the session together. Yep. Um, maybe we put together sort of what would be some potential questions and topics to focus on. And that might help us, like if we do want to gear some of the discussion toward Hyperledger, maybe then it does make sense to try to pull in um, someone there. I mean, I think, I've already had some discussions with Rye and another woman, Salona, who's working at the LF on the Hyperledger project and have an update to share either later in this call or I can just send it out by email if we have too many agenda items. But I'd like to just maybe propose that as a next step. Good call. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Yeah, I was, okay. I was talking to her about this, so she's, she's happy to get involved. I may understand. Right. So, yeah, it's yep. great. Then we, we are having this meeting at the Open Source Leadership Summit, right? Yes, and I haven't nailed it down yet in terms of the timing, but that's my goal to try to get best uh, option for as many people as possible this week. Mm -hmm. Yeah, perhaps we can add this as another topic for the agenda, like the meeting at, at the Open Source Leadership Summit. Does it make sense? Add what specifically? The 
Oh, in, in the agenda, I mean, the, so the, the agenda for today, we have some oh, axioms there, sure. so perhaps to add this as a, another topic. Yes. So but I will add this here. Oh, Georg, please go ahead. I won't touch anything. <laughs> Thank you. Okay, well, m more than hyperlayer meeting, which is part of this, I would say chaos DNI meeting, and then it happens that we'll be meeting with hyperlayer and perhaps some other people. So it would be great to have more people involved from the, from the foundation, definitely. Yes. Okay. So in terms of the Open Source Leadership Summit, uh, the specific action is, well, first to talk to, to Nicole. She has experience uh, acting as moderator. Uh, she's great as, as panelist, so I don't know. <laughs> Uh, yeah. where she's seen herself, but the easiest way probably is to ask her. So a, a right. potential action is to send an email to her. Um, yes. I can do this if you want. So, yeah, and I don't, I don't mind either. Um, yeah, I think either one is fine, yeah. Okay, so then, Sarah, you're in charge of... The okay, I'll, yeah, I'll take that one because we've already been talking about it. And yeah, I'll, I'll be happy to do that one. Okay. No, uh, Georg, so uh, as far as my understanding, I will send an email to Nicole and then Sarah will send an email to prepare the meeting with Hyperlayer. That's the, is what we agree, Sarah? Sure. Okay, perfect. Thank you, Georg. Thank you, Sarah. <clears throat> okay. So then we have this meeting at Open Source Leadership Summit. I would say that the goal of the meeting is, uh, well, we have this Hyperlayer meeting. Uh, so that's great. Um, Sarah is going to set up the meeting and so on. Uh, then uh, this chaos uh, diversity and inclusion meeting is, well, apart from the specific use case that we want to, to have here, probably is good as well that we all meet in any case and discuss about the objectives and key results and so on. That, uh, well, and basically these discussions that we should have probably with some coffee and so on. So I don't know if you you have any comments about this, uh, or Georg, Sarah, Matt, others? No, I think that'd be great. Uh, yeah. I know there's another project at the LF Zephyr, and Kate Stewart's involved in that, and she's been involved in chaos as well. Mm -hmm. And I know she's um, very enthusiastic about potentially making Zephyr a case study pilot project within the DNI working group too. That'd be great. Yeah. Yeah, with, with this respect, people from Uber will be around. They are... Uh, well, they are customers fast, but I was talking to them about this, this working group and initiative and so on. I, I would say they are, they are happy to, to participate and help. So I will, I will contact them. So in case uh, they can join the, the meeting. So I'm not okay. sure this is the appropriate place to bring this up in terms of the meeting, but hmm. one of the things that continues to cross my mind is as we are, as there are communities or projects that are interested in deploying the DNI metrics. Um, how, how can we um, help in that regard, you know, in, in the production of the reports kind of thing? So how, it's, it's this weird, you know, the chaos DNI work group is, is doing all this excellent work around the articulation of the metrics, mm -hmm. um, but the deployment of them is kind of another question. And so, we have the communities or the projects that are interested. We've got the the um, the DNI work group that's obviously interested. But then making that point of connection is is uh, tricky. So, like a liaison, um, do we identify somebody from a community? Maybe I'm thinking too far ahead. No, I think um, Nicole and I actually had a call about this last week, and we were sort of mulling over the same point because our discussion point was focused on how would we maybe start working in a list of the Kubernetes community. And I've worked mm -hmm. with some people on the mentoring initiative there, but to your point, you know, how to get them one aware of our metrics and our process and what the work we're doing, and then to see if we can actually get actively engaged and start yeah. working on something as tangible as a report or whatever focus area, exactly like what we're doing, trying to do with Hyperledger, you know? Mm -hmm. Is that sort of what you're talking about? It now? is. It is, and I think there's a there's a cost. I don't necessarily mean a financial cost, but there's a cost involved in doing that. Right. And it's got to be well, picked it, up somewhere. Yeah. It. Yeah, and I, that's why I was hoping that some in persons meet in person meetings at OSLS might 
kickstart that, but there might even be some materials or a way to package it um, as like a start getting started with the DNI working group okay. for how we can help type of material or document that might be needed. But I, I mm. hear what you're saying and I'm, okay. I've been thinking about the same thing. Okay. Yeah. Maybe not an answer today, but it's just, it keeps coming up on my mind. So. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we had, we had some, some kind of discussion last week about this topic and I think we had two or three approaches that sounds like reasonable to the people in the meeting or, or at least two or three ideas that were, well, in the first place, like, well, we, we are the ones doing this in the diversity and inclusion working group. So we produce a specific, um, uh, let's say, report for uh, community X. Uh, another way would be definitely to have people from Outreachy or Google Summer of Code or others. It's not specifically code, but it's it's kind of around and they, they may help our students, interns, grants for this. Um, the other is that we are kind of consultants or external consultants where we help the people from the communities. So we have, let's say, a supporter from uh, this community X and then uh, we, we drive them around well, this is DNI, the way this was defined by chaos. Of course, it's not closed, but then uh, you should start with this and this and this and that. And then what you said, which is starting with uh, chaos DNI, uh, some documentation and so on would be definitely helpful. So, Can you, uh, so I tried to capture this in the notes. Can you take hmm. at number one and three? Because yeah, they so sound the same to me. Where's the difference? Hmm. Oh, so, so yeah, so the first one is that we do all the work. So in the same way that, uh, for instance, uh, Nicole and me, we produce the OpenStack gender report. The third one would be like, we have a supporter, let's say in this case, Rai from Hyperlayer, then he's the one uh, doing all of the work, but he may need some directions or help at the beginning and the outcomes and how to produce things. So then we are kind of, we are here to help. So let's imagine that we can have, I don't know, 20 minutes for in the following eight weeks in our weekly meetings where we help try to produce this data. That might be another way. So we are kind of consultants, kind of this. Mm. Um, yeah, so uh, this, is, this is what I remember from our last week uh, discussion, Matt. So I appreciate that. Thanks. And other, way, other ways of collaboration are more than great, definitely. Yeah. Uh, in, the per, in the perfect world, I'd love to have a person who is somehow funded to do this. I'm saying in a perfect world. <laughs> yeah, of course. And look, look, looking for, we, we can have a call for sponsors. Um, so let's say that we, I mean, we are people that we are all paid to do some job. Mm -hmm. And in some cases, this might be uh, part of our job or even or of our free time. I don't know. So we can we can make some calls for uh, for sponsorship around this, and then yeah. that's another way. Mm -hmm. And this might be a, a fourth a four a fourth possible method, uh, Georg. Yeah. <laughs> to look for a sponsorship, and then uh, people within the community are the ones doing this. The trick is in the charter right now, we're not funded at all via mm. the LF. Mm. I think that's specific in the charter. So we'd have to not think. Funded, not funded mm. by the LF, you said? Yeah. Yeah. And um, I know I'm, we're scheduled to do a demo of um, a new offering that the LF is going to have with some of the people um, on this call. And I think there might be a way for that to uh, play a role. So Okay. We can that we'll be learning. I think there might be some ways to help with this cause. Okay, cool. Mm -hmm. Thanks. Yeah, or we, we can have an open call. Like we have this sponsor willing to do this analysis. Who are the companies that are willing to participate here or produce the service? Yeah. Um, yeah. So uh, 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 more things about meetings at the Open Source Leadership Summit. Uh, comments. Questions? Ooh, someone no. just joined. Might this be Nicole? Oh, no, uh, it's me. I have to um, transfer from my computer. Oh, there's some Nicole. Okay. Cool. Okay. Uh, yeah, I have no meeting things, at least regarding DNI. 
Okay. Um, uh, should we go for the uh, Outreachy in turn follow up? So we jump over several items. What did you mind? Yeah, Georg, you and I were going to put together a proposal. Okay. Do you remember this? I do remember that. Now that we talk about it. It, it, so that's it hasn't happened, but it's gonna happen. Okay, thank you. Yep. Perfect. And then, uh, so what do you think if we go for the Emmanuel? What do you think if we go for the discussion that you want to that you brought to the agenda? I don't know if, how much time you are willing to spend, and then we can go for the other uh, rest of the items in the agenda. Yeah, sounds good. Um, so. That two Fridays ago, we had like a uh, research round table around open source and inclusion mm -hmm. um, about like looking at which metrics to collect that will kind of give us more information about how inclusive an open source community was. Um, and in the end, we kind of did like a voting thing where we landed uh, on like two metrics or, or like two things to look at to, or to start collecting as metrics. Uh, and one of those was our tool. So they were, um, one was looking at the communication channels and like looking at sentiment in, in communication channels. Then the other one was looking at like pull requests and code reviews on GitHub as means of looking at like inclusivity to, uh, in, uh, in the open source community. And we just wanted to come back with like these two things that we're going to start off with and kind of get the community's opinion on like how useful you guys think this would be into looking into, you know, um, diversity and inclusion, in these communities. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Uh, so the, the first question I have is, uh, did you bring other metrics or yeah, other the metrics that you thought, well, those are interesting ones, but the, the two that we are kind of selecting are these two that you mentioned, or all of the discussions were around these two metrics? No, no, no. So we, uh, we had like this uh, straw man of metrics we had put together ahead of time, and we just kind of let the people that were there kind of vote on which ones they thought we should work on, and mm -hmm. which ones they thought would like uh, bring more. Um, yeah, so it, it wasn't just these two. We had other metrics that we were thinking of, but like, we know that like because uh, we're we're looking into plug plugging into Augur, and we know Augur already collects metrics, so we're mm -hmm. considering like using the metrics that Augur collects already to try to form some like uh, some to try to like get, learn more about diversity and inclusion, but as well as also include you know this these two features uh and kind of see if they will also provide us more information mm -hmm. yeah um, well i don't know any of you have any comment on this i think it's a good idea to integrate this with auger uh, because i know auger has not does not have any dni metrics yet mm -hmm. The um, sentiment in communication channels is something we have talked about a lot. Now let's just pulling up what we already have on that. Um, because I, I think that would be something good to think through. And if I remember correctly, we don't have anything yet for sentiment. And so it would be good as a green field for you to explore and then work with us to define what this actually means, how you want to implement it. So there's a lot of freedom here, a lot of mm -hmm. exploration. And then pull requests and reviews. Um, I don't think we have anything on that yet either. So those are both very interesting and we, we have a lot of exploration and innovation to do here. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yep. Yeah, just um, perhaps a couple of comments from my from my point of view is well, having uh, having the metrics are are good to understand to to be aware of what's going on in the community. So uh, basically, let's say uh, you can measure things and bring some numbers to discussion. Uh, I'm not sure. So this is in terms of diversity. So you can have how diverse the community is from several perspectives. The other one is how with these metrics we can say that this 
how, how inclusive the community is. Um, and I don't know. So perhaps this is a good starting point, right? Yeah, um, we're definitely like aren't gonna make these the only two, I guess, uh, like standards for diversity and inclusion. But we thought it was like a good starting off point uh, to mm. figure out like what kind of metrics we think we could collect around these, and then kind of start building up because we have like a like a longer list, but those mm. were kind of too ambitious to kind of just get started right away, and um, we weren't sure if the those like that that information we needed would be easily like accessible. So we had to work around that as well. Mm. Yeah, perhaps, as, as, as Georg is doing in the notes, perhaps one, a good, uh, a good pilot here would be like, well, we may go for these two metrics and how, how can we integrate these two metrics into the focus areas that we already have? Because perhaps if we go for, I'm just kind of speaking loudly here, but uh, we can say communication channels plus sentiment, um, this might be, uh, as, as, as Georg is saying, well, this is project and community, but if we go, let's say, only for sentiment in, in the communication channels, we may go for um, any, some, some other, uh, let's say, uh, area, focus areas that we have, because perhaps there are communication channels for, uh, I don't know, agenda preparation of certain events somewhere, yeah. and then this is perhaps more related to event than in some other cases. And people feel that the organizers of uh, the summits are not that inclusive as others. I don't know. So perhaps we can have this discussion as well. OK, awesome. Uh, if, if this makes sense to, to you, I don't know. OK. OK, thank you. Uh, more more comments? So it's it's great. Do you have do you have the straw and the straw, um, the, this document somewhere accessible? Uh, yeah, I can um, see if I can pull it up. I have, we have a, we had like a slide with it. Um, oh, would be great. So if you, if you can share yeah. this. It's, it's, yeah, it's because, um, let's see, we, uh, whenever, like, whenever Georg was on the call, it was interesting because we were, like, whenever we, like, we created this list before we found out that, like, mm -hmm. chaos is a thing. And then, like, whenever we kind of checked, the things we had and the things you guys had, it was very interesting to kind of have um, kind of like similar similar um, metrics to look at, I guess. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, let me get the link. Yeah, well, in the meantime, it comes to my mind that uh, in terms of Grimoire Lab, uh, so the project doesn't have information about sentiment analysis, that it's already integrated with any data source uh, the option to have the, uh, the gender of the, of the member of the community. So, uh, well, that's something to start with as well. So we would have information in the communication channels plus pull requests and reviews, for instance. We didn't have on the other hand sentiment analysis. Mm -hmm. Okay. Oh, and then uh, I just dropped a link uh, in the chat. Uh, if you go to like the second to last slide, we mm -hmm. like made like a little graphic and we were looking at like, um, and we, we, had, we had some like, uh, I guess, concepts on there that we wanted to look at. So we, we were looking at things from like the community, the policy, um, contribution leaders. Um, and then like, uh, yeah, and then we were like looking at for the attributes of like, a, of like the open source community. We we're looking at the size, how old mm -hmm. is this project? Is it, an, is it an open core project? Is there a corporate involvement in the project? What kind of licensing are they using? And then trying to look at like membership demographics, um, but those are just kind of like, I guess, big umbrella things about every community. Uh -huh. um, and then uh, for in terms of inclusion, we're looking at like the composition of the community, looking at participation uh, from there, and then quality of the participation and if it's sustained, right? So like, how like how often are they doing it, and are they doing it for a long time? Um, was something we also wanted to look at. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, and then and, and like policy, we had like looking at like meetings, looking at how people voted, seeing if there's a code of conduct, how accessible, uh, how transparent. Um, we're looking at like onerous on, onerous processes. Um, like, is it hard to do something, and does that keep people from like joining the community or mm -hmm. whatnot? Um, and then th that kind of stuff. Yeah. Okay, thank you, uh, Emmanuel. I, I I saw that uh, Georg already added this to the to the. Uh, notes, but can we have this link in the notes? Is it possible? 
Or do you prefer to have to link to some PDF somewhere? Oh, sorry, I didn't catch that. Um, you oh, yeah, so, so Georg already added into the notes that we have for the meeting of today a link to the slides, the one you provided. But I don't know if you want uh -huh. us to, to have that, that specific link or you prefer us to, to link some PDF, so, because if not, people can access the editable version of the slides. Yeah, I will get a PDF link and I'll link that in the meeting notes instead, yeah. Okay, perfect, thank you. Good. Well, I see that we only have only access, but well, just in case. Yeah, sounds good. Okay, thank you. Okay, it's great, thank you. Um, more comments? Sure. Did we, did we answer your questions, Emmanuel, or? Yes, yeah, yes, yeah. thank you very much, yeah. Thank you, thank you for sharing. Yeah. Uh, so, more comments? No comments? No, yeah, thanks for sharing. So, okay. I have a question then. What are your next steps? And how can we yeah. help? that so I guess the next steps were to kind of dive more into the two things that we've selected um, in terms of like the whole um, the whole communication channels and the code review process or, and, or the code reviews and, and the PRs kind of dive more into like what kind of metrics we could collect around that because like, we do want to have like numbers right around these things but we also want to like see if like looking at just like general sense some more information as well, so we want to find out what kind of numbers we, we could collect. Um, and so that's like, I guess, a, a, a process. We're also going to talk to like the, the, the people at Augur, kind of figure out what, what metrics they already have that they're collecting and look at how those metrics can also be like, uh, th those metrics could be used for open source and uh, open source and inclusion, sorry, diversity and inclusion. So um, kind of that's like the first, the first next step. So like figure out exactly what, like what metrics we want to collect but then talk to Augur, see what they already have, uh, and then how those can play into kind of learning more about inclusion and diversity. Okay, sounds sounds like a good plan. The the one one thing that we have seen in the past that I just want to raise awareness for is. There are metrics that are easy to get and that um, a lot of the tools that we have to date focus on because that's just the data that was available. And the harder ones, like the two that you selected, communication channels and pull requests and reviews, those are harder to get. And so it, it's a matter of reversing the order that you work from what you want to achieve and then finding the metrics or working from the metrics you have and trying to interpret them. Yeah. 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 I, I see what you're saying. Yeah. yeah we, were, we were also like, whenever like we decided on the, the two, we were kind of hesitant about like the difficulty as to like getting the, like get, getting the metrics or the information. So, um, yeah. That's a, so that's something to keep in mind. Yeah, I think I'll, I'll kind of reiterate on Georg's point. So this is something we actually learned from Daniel, which was kind of these, these, these goal question metric approach. I think this is what you're talking about, Georg. So just not yes. a metric for metric's sake, but try to identify what the goal is that you're trying to accomplish irrespective of a metric to begin. Mm -hmm. I, I don't know if this is what you were talking about, Georg. We're kind of yes. getting... I'm talking about that to okay. work kind of sort of like the through the metric and not the other way around. Because yeah, it, it, look this, at Augur and see what they have, you do the second approach. Yeah, so just try to identify the, the goal in mind, whatever that goal might be, irrespective of yeah. any metric. So with respect okay. to DNI or growth, maturity, and decline, or risk, or value, um, identify that first. Um, and it's and it's through kind of a series of steps that'll get you to a metric that can help you address that goal. And again, thanks to Daniel and the whole group at <laughs> at Petersia that helped educate us on this really uh, nicely structured approach. Okay. Well, yeah, I will we'll definitely do that instead. Yeah, makes sense. Oh. 
thank you all for your comments. It's a great discussion indeed. Well, yes, um, thank you guys. Yeah, thank you. Hmm. Yeah, the, well, just the, the, the very, very last comment is this uh, goal question metric approach or objective key results is good for framing the what you are trying to follow with this analysis. So it helps to have a broader perspective of what to do in the next steps, as Georg mentioned in terms of well, what, what are the next steps, right? So it's around that, that idea. Hmm. Okay. Um, so then the next item for today is review the last week's uh, action items. Um, thank you for highlighting. Oh, you removed this, Georg. I moved it down. Okay. I'm going down. Yeah, thank you. So um, maybe we can start from the bottom of the list because I didn't do my task and I'm really sorry about this. So um, as Nicole is not here, we only have Georg and Matt, perhaps you are aware of, of some of Nicole's uh, axioms. So I don't know. But uh, then the only one I think we can discuss about is uh, the preparation of a project description, but it's still open. So I think we don't have any advance, right? Uh, yeah, I think all of the action items have not been watched still open. Okay. So I have one that I'm doing this week. It was kind of a request from uh, the, the new common work group. Mm -hmm. And so what they want is on the metrics repository. Right now we have that big laundry list. It's a huge list of, of metrics, right? Mm -hmm. And so they had asked that I start connecting um, if a metric is listed in the metrics page, kind of connecting it back to um, the work that's being done in the respective work group. So if there's a metric, say, on you know age of pull request, and that's a metric that's being addressed in the GMD, the growth maturity and decline work group, that I make a reference you know back to the work group where the work is actually being done on the metric. So this week I'm doing it for DNI. So they're um, when this happens, at least on the GMD, sometimes I issue a few pull requests that are just about naming issues. Sometimes there's just issues of naming between the two lists and I like to try to get those squared away. So I need to get that done by Thursday, I think of this week. So if you have questions on that, let me know. Thank you for doing that, Matt. Sure, yeah, it doesn't impact anything that you're doing in the DNI work group at all. Are you are you planning to have some kind of mm, catalog of metrics and unique identifiers and this kind yeah, of stuff? Yeah, so if you just, if you go to the, well, here, let me, I'll put it in the chat. Give me a second here. Mm. Thank you. Okay, so here is the, whoops, chat. Here's the current fork that I have. So this is the new structure. This is, a lot of this is the merge structure of the chaos metrics repository. And so if you scroll down, you'll see that table you see that? So you'll see where it says like GMD there. If you click on, see that first one, which is closed issues for the GMD. Yes. If you click on closed issues, it'll actually take you to the work that's being done in the GMD group. Mm, I see. It, um, and if it's not being addressed, like whatever, say code commits is not being addressed by either work group right now. Um, it just kind of stays local in the metrics work group. And so what I need to do is I need to go through this list and whatever might be in this list that's currently being worked on in the DNI group, I would link over to that work. Or if there's um, metrics that you have in the DNI in the work group that aren't in this list, I would update this list. So that's basically, I just need to add that third column, DNI when appropriate and then 
in that first column, I would link to the actual work that's being done in the DNI group. And so, uh, the re uh, what's that? Uh, I was just thinking um, from the way the table looks right now, uh -huh. if I wanted to see the work done in GMD, uh -huh. I was thinking what make, I, I want to click on GMD. Well, right now you click on closed issues. Right. And I see that, but I was just thinking as someone coming to this, if I wanted to go to GMD and then after have to jump two points over. Well, let me, let me, let me do that in the next round. Yeah. <laughs> let, me, let me just finish this pass first. <laughs> okay. Yeah, I think, I, actually, I think there was a request on that too, because it's quite possible that two work groups could be using the same metric. But then we don't want two different pieces of work. Anyway, we'll, let's address that. Okay. Next. Hmm. That's that's good. Thank you. It sounds like a lot of job, a lot of work, right? Um, it's not so bad to be honest with you. So is and actually, it's good. It, I think it's good to do. And the the reason that we're doing it again, a little out of bandwidth DNI here, is that the the common work group wants to identify um, metrics that are in this list that they believe to be important, that everybody might want, but they're not currently being addressed by DNI or mm -hmm. GMD. So for example, the, the big one that has kind of kicked off the whole common group is the organizational involvement, you know, the organizational diversity, mm -hmm. that it's not really finding a home in DNI right now, and it's not really finding a home in D, uh, GMD, but it's probably a, one that a lot of people care about. So then the work would just occur here inside of this metrics repo. So, mm -hmm. so yes, that's kind of my, kind of on my task list is to keep these things organized um, and just observe the work that you're doing. Keep it all linked. You are the observer. <laughs> I'm the observer. <laughs> I'm a linker. <laughs> the behind the scenes person. So, so that's that. Okay. Thank you. Yep. Um, Georg, I may need some help with the uh, key results with objective number five and so on, because I don't exactly remember the way we were proceeding to deal with this specific action item. Yeah, so this is an update item from last Tuesday. We discussed the infrastructure for releasing metrics and one of the key takeaways from last week is that we are looking at different ways of doing it, not just the way I presented last week. And then the governing board will be asked to vote on which way we want to go. Because the what I presented last week had some downsides with regards to versioning mm -hmm. that were not supported. So in terms of actions for this meeting, uh, do we need to have some discussion on this or this is simply the presentation of the of this specific action? This was just an update. Hmm. Okay. And then I guess it's a similar case for the next one that would be advancing metrics from Chaos Con Workshop or well, that, that is uh, you and Don. You are running the workshop, and mm -hmm. uh, the question is what's going to happen to those metrics next? Yeah, you're right. How can we move those to the repository? Because right now they're in the Google Doc, and mm -hmm. that, that's great, but that's only the first step. Yeah, yeah, you're right. Hmm. So then, okay, regarding this specific task, uh, yeah, you, you are right that we should uh, go and keep advancing. So probably what we can do, I don't know if we even have an issue for this opening the repository. Do you know about this, Georg? Well, we, so we have, have the issues so open for each metric. Yeah, but we need someone probably to review the word. Yeah, what, what I meant was, so we have the issues with the link to the Google Doc, but then probably the next step would be to have someone 
taking those Google Docs, reviewing them and say, well, this is good enough for uh, a pull request, let's say, or this still needs some um, discussion probably. So, okay, I, I, will, I will volunteer for this and then I will, I will review all of the Google Docs together with um, my previous task because I still have to go through the authors of those docs and then add them as contributors. So um, as I'm doing this, I can review the docs. It's four or five. Okay. If it happens that they are good enough for a pull request, I will pull request. So we start the process. If they are not good enough, I will, I will let you know in the next meeting. Does it make sense? I think that makes perfect sense as a next step. Okay. Um, then I don't know if we have any other task related to this that you have in mind apart from these two. Oh, um, when you go look through the Google Doc, can you also write a comment with your conclusion? Yeah. Mm -hmm. That's why we have it documented. Okay. Okay, yeah, I'll do this. And then, yeah. So any more comments here with these two updates? I don't know. Comments, questions, concerns? No. No, okay. that's good. So then the next agenda item is uh, look for the meeting, next meeting facilitator and note taker. So any volunteer around? I'm always quick to volunteer, but I want to give others an opportunity as well. I don't mind okay. doing either next week again. Okay, so. so notes last week, do you want to facilitate Zero? Sure. Awesome. I'm happy to take notes again. Okay, well, thank you. Hmm. So this is this is all we have in the agenda. So I don't know if you have any other topic you would like to discuss about. Comment. Say hello to the family. Hello. I had one um, item related to the call for speakers is open for two events that are taking place next October. One is Grace Topper, and I know Nicole said she's interested in potentially. She will be there, and she is interested in potentially putting together you know the similar talk that we've been trying to get out to events about the work we're doing. And then the other is All Things Open, mm -hmm. takes place very similar timing. And then actually the Open Source Summit Europe, none of these overlap, but they are in close sequence together, it takes place I think late fall, um, late October. So there are those three opportunities. And if people know that they'll be at the, any, of the other, any of those or think they might, you know, we could potentially work together on those as well. Mm -hmm. Yeah, well, thank you for, for bringing this to the table. So uh, personally, I'm, I'm, I'm going to Open Source Summit Europe. Right. So I'll be there for sure. Okay. Does anyone else know if they are planning to commit to any of those three events? I'm currently looking for an employer for when I graduate in May. And so until I have that settled, I don't know my travel plan. Okay. Yeah. And all things open might be a possibility for me, but uh, I don't know. Okay. Okay. Well, I'll, the two are due in mid-March. Uh, open Source Summit Europe's a little bit further out, so we have some time there. But I'll, you know, start tracking against those and see, you know, who we might end up being able to submit by next March or you know the second week of March, and then we can always probably add people in as well. Mm -hmm. Okay, thank you. Sounds good. Thank you. Thank you for keeping on top of this, Sarah. Sure. Yeah. So, um, I know you have more things. If not, uh, we can save 10 minutes for today, which is good. Yeah. In any case. So, no 